It's dark for most of us when we come out of uh, come out of the uh, JW religion. We feel empty or not sure. We we have now been cut off from everyone. So in our mind we we feel this blank this unsurety and it's lonely there's really no one to talk to <clears throat> and sometimes most of the time we just talk to ourselves but here's what I do um, I've been doing this now for a little bit I when I left in 2012 I I felt this way I felt blank I actually went and even talked to I remember uh, my mom lived in town and there was a, a lady minister that moved next door into a rental house and I even talked to her and she I don't know no one no one really can understand um, unless you've been a Jehovah's Witness or perhaps have been in a cult had your mind controlled so you get out uh, our minds are still under the control of whatever we p programmed into our minds. So we have this blank feeling because we're not getting the, uh, well, what do they call it? They called it the spiritual food at the proper time. We're not getting the, the indoctrination every day, you know, at the proper time. So our minds are now wondering, where's that indoctrination? So now we go blank. So, so what I did is I started to create places around me and uh, just like here in the uh, where I'm living now you can create places so I'm gonna I'm gonna show show you who I am here I am this is this is me so I'm, I'm here in this place now I created this place but really what's behind me well it's endless it could be anything if if I wanted, it could just be. It could just be. Oh well, that's not so bad. That's my good wife. She's <laughs> she's pretty good. So I have a curtain. I just hung a curtain up. <clears throat> it's a green screen, but <clears throat> with our mind, we can do this. We we can green screen inside our brains, and so so what I've done here just to demonstrate it. This is what I've done over the years, and I would start writing books. And I wrote, I wanted to know, uh, where did we come from? So I started writing books and from the cosmos. And I, I have these online under books, a playlist. And then I wrote, wrote A Journey to Love. and Then Finding Purpose and then to the Satu. And this is where some of the magic happened up to the north. And there was some good things. Now those stories are not online. You'd have to read them. They're on Amazon. And then... Um, the last, the last book was probably the most interesting. It was called The Lost Language. <clears throat> so that's where my mind went. And um, oftentimes we can um, do that. It's good, to, it's good to put a date on things. A lot of people ask me to put a date on the thing. And it, you know, it's good to identify ourselves. So... Um, I, I think it would be good to have some some kind of a background. Um, let's see what we can find. Something like this, maybe. That's nice. You know, so we can put that in our mind's eye. We can we can go there. But you know, it'd be nice to have some waves. Can you hear them? I can hear them. Some waves. It's kind of nice. Woodpecker in the background. You can just sit here and relax. And just watch the ocean. Listen to the birds in the background. And the waves are... And just focus on the waves. And pretty soon we're in a new world. <clears throat> and I, I sometimes like to throw some music in there. So this, this is something we could throw in. Do I have that? No. Let's see what I have for music. Oh, here we are. Yeah, 
you know, gives us a tropical feeling, Jamaican, reggae, you know, maybe we get away from things. And sometimes um, when I'm thinking to myself, <clears throat> I'm thinking, you know, why, um, I'm going to turn the music down a bit. But I'm thinking to myself, why did I get involved with the JW religion? You know, I, I think about that. And I don't have to think long or hard. Now it's been, what, two years I've been working on this channel. Day in, day out, we've been working on it. But really, it's not the channel we're working on. <laughs> it's fixing my faith. Just like the uh, title says, fixing my faith. I'm fixing myself. So this is what I'm doing. You know, sometimes we go to the safe place if we have no one to talk to and we can talk to ourselves. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk to, I'm going to talk to myself. Well, here's the, the number one reason why I, I know I made the right decision by leaving the Jehovah's Witness religion. It's, it's life over death. <clears throat> Jesus talked about life over death. If you're a Jehovah's Witness, if you're a Jehovah's Witness, you got to choose death over life. Why? Because the nine men at the governing body say so. That's how they interpret the scriptures. Now, when I read the scriptures, I read something totally different. Totally different. Who, who in the Bible commits fornication and dies over it? No one. Jesus... When they wanted to stone the prostitute, Jesus stepped in and said, well, you know, who of you have not sinned, cast the first stone. And they all walked away because we're all sinners. So, even though the Bible does talk about blood, it doesn't say we should die over it. In fact, the Apostle Paul went on to say, you know what, if you're in a meat market, all food's good for you, even the strangled stuff, you can eat it. As long as a Jew's not there. And this is really about the Jews, um, the, these rules. They came in because the Jews had 620 rules, so they boiled it down to a few rules. And uh, Paul said, you wouldn't want to stumble the Jew. You know. But you know, Jews take blood transfusions. That's, that's the bizarre thing. And Jehovah's Witnesses want, to, want you to die. They want you to die. They want you to choose death. You, in fact, you sign a power of attorney card over to their HLC. You choose death over life. To me, that's cult. That's not to me, that's to me, the whole world. The whole world looks at this as a big fat cult. This is not a religion. Religions don't make you choose death over life. Let's wake up here, folks. Let's just wake up for a moment. Jesus never, ever did that. Jesus broke rules. On the Sabbath, he broke rules. He went and plucked grain, ate, and he'd pull. He said who, to the Pharisees, he says, are you going to let your lamb or whatever fall in the well and die on the Sabbath? No, you're going to pull him out and save its life. It's life over death. You can break rules. You can speed on a freeway or a, or a roadway if you're taking someone to a hospital. Life over death. You had to break the rules temporarily to get them there as quick as you could to save their life. That's why ambulance speed, but, you know, we have them. But sometimes we have to break rules when it comes to life over death. That's my number one reason. Number two is shunning kills. Shunning kills. Uh, even Miriam, who was, uh, uh, did something wrong, you know, she was, uh, uh, you know, they brought this up in the broadcast, right? Broadcast September 2024. Miriam. Miriam was only shunned for seven days. She had to go outside the city for seven days and came back in. The Jehovah's Witnesses shunned for years and years. Uh, if you don't... You see, here's the thing. If you walk away, you're shunned for life. If you walk away. Because if you don't believe in number one, right? If you don't believe in number one, life over death, the blood thing that they promote, you're shunned. You can't publicly have that decision and, and be still in their religion. You're shunned. So shunning kills because now you're, you lose all your family ties. It's, it's worse than solitary confinement. Your family can visit prisoners in prison. Shunning kills. 
and uh, Jehovah's Witnesses have the highest, one of the highest suicide rates, 10% higher than the normal populace. Now, number three, CSE cover-ups. That's an obstruction of justice. Why would I want my contributions going into a religion that's committing crimes? They're hiding and covering up CSA. That's criminal activity. It's gone on for decades within the religion. It's been covered up. That's why a lot of us didn't know about it at the time. They really did a snap-on job covering it up. But once the internet got here, they could not cover this one up any longer. And we don't have to be too smart to figure this out, folks. It's all over the news. You plug this in. in Wikipedia, they have story after story on this religion. I would be embarrassed to be a part of this religion today. I, I couldn't be in it. In fact, when I was in it, I was talking about the Catholics and all their stuff. And I said to them, "If I'm thank God that I'm in a religion that's not like this. If this religion was like this, I said to all the elders around me, I'd quit. And they all agreed. We all agreed in the 80s. And now today, I bet you most of you elders are still in there because you are following men. And you're committing obstruction of justice. So you've committed crimes in God's eyes, in Jesus' eyes, you're not in a good place. So that's, that's number three. Number four is idol worshippers, followers of men. Following, we've been reading the elders book right in the beginning. It says you follow the faithful slave over the Bible. If you have problems with this book, you go through the channels. Yeah, you, you, it's idol worship. This is all passed down through district overseer, circuit overseer, assembly overseer, elders, ministerial servants, pioneers. It's all passed down. It's all following men. And now you don't even read the Bible at your little stands. You pass out business cards for nine men. You go to their site, their website, their publishing company. And they even tell us that they're not inspired. They tell us that and they, they tell us they really don't have all the answers. But yet they want you to believe and they want me to believe that, that they're it. They're God's chosen channels. I'm sorry, folks. This is idol worship to the 10th degree. This should be as clear as, clear as ice, as clear as anything to, to any of us. Okay, what's next? My fifth one is when you wake up, you have all this freedom from mental entrapment. Now this is a huge one, but when you finally wake up, uh, the whole world around you is different. It's not evil, it's not wicked. When you finally wake up and come out of all of this indoctrination and, and you've spent some time on it, it's worth, it's worth the, the journey, it's worth it. Number five, the freedom from the mental entrapment. No longer are you entrapped to the watchtower for everlasting life. No longer are you entrapped to their false doctrines and false predictions over and over again. How many times have you ever wondered why uh, in the same chapter they say they're the faithful slave, Matthew 24? That same chapter it says no man knows the hour or the day, but yet they predicted 1914. They're running with this. It didn't happen when Russell came. He was a bit depressed, but Rutherford said I'll make that work. It's heavenly. They've ran with that to this day. 1914 they, they predicted the day it didn't happen and then they predicted a bunch of other days um, like Rutherford predicted 1925 19 a bunch of dates 1975 was another one now they quit predicting but they're hanging on to the 1914 facade but still it's all predictions and if you read that chapter Matthew 24 it says no man knows the hour of the day why the hell are they predicting? Why is anybody predicting? Why have they predicted? That should wake us up. That, that's complete mental entrapment. No man knows the hour of the day. Go with it. These guys are not the faithful slave. They're the evil slave. Remember, if you read in the same chapter, it says, talks about the faithful slave, and then it talks about the evil slave kicks out the servants because the day that they predicted the master is coming back didn't happen. So they start kicking out the fellow slaves because the fellow slaves stood up and said, hey, something's wrong. That was us. We're the apostates. We got kicked out. It's all in that chapter. Read it. Read it. No one reads it, but read it. It's so clear. So when you wake up the freedom, you start understanding the Bible a bit clearer. And I know the Bible is a big book and there's lots of things to understand. Is it true? Is it not true? Is 
who's the god of this system, all of these things. But at least when you wake up, you have the freedom from mental entrapment and you can explore with an open mind. And it's like sitting by the ocean here, uh, listening to uh, the waves come in and then throw in a bit of reggae music into it. Well, we'll see you guys later. We love you all, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.